Um, we will talk about kind of the, the new news in the world of distress, and that is the introduction of a new palette of colors. So for 2015, we're introducing 12 new colors in the distress line, a different color every month. And we're shaking things up a little bit because in the past I've always focused on a specific product where I've either featured markers in their application or paints or sprays or stains. Now it's all about the color available in all of the product categories of that color. And what's even I think more fun is that no one knows the color until it's released. And that would be nobody here other than myself and the chemist know what the colors are, which I think is really great because that's going to keep the excitement going, I hope, for the industry throughout the year. In addition to talking about the colors, I'm also going to feature different ways that they interact with the existing palette because that's one thing that's very important is not only to understand the excitement of something new, but how it can work with things that people already have. That's always, always important. As a crafter, you know, I want to grow my creativity. I don't want to replace it. So the color for January is Cracked Pistachio. And this is a beautiful, beautiful color. It is a wonderful green. It has a great, vibrant appeal to it, but this color can change depending on what colors you mix with it, and that's one of the things that I like to show. So first thing I'll talk about is mixing it uh, from a color palette. I'll talk about sprays. We can even touch base on paints if you're interested, and then go into the inks. So on its own, it's a great color. So for people that like a brighter palette, this is really good. And one thing I like to clarify is, you know, for me as someone that loves vintage, I love vintage. Vintage and Distress, those to me kind of are hand in hand, and it's very different than grunge. Grunge is very brown, very beat up, very grunge. Distress is not grunge, not, not to me, but I think a lot of people sometimes relate Distress to brown, dirty grunge, and it doesn't have to be. You can have something very beautiful and colorful, but it's still Distress, and it still has a vintage vibe versus something fresh like Dilutions, right? but it doesn't mean that it has to be brown. So I wanna take you through and show you that if you like that fresh color, perfect. But if you do like things a little bit more vintage or grunge, you can take care of that too. So here I'm gonna show you one of my favorite color combos with this. And that of course is working with, oh, I love that color too. Um, we'll take some cracked pistachio, distress spray stain, and we'll combine it with pumice stone spray stain. So I'm gonna work with that, that's what I need. See, I felt lost. <laughs> Now I'm found. It was like, it's like my security blanket. It's like, okay, before I even do anything, where is that? Um, so here I'm just going to go in and I'm going to spray some of the spray stain. Now one of the things that I like to be in the habit of whenever I'm spraying ink is always get in the habit of wiping up that nozzle, whether you're using distress spray stain, dilutions, anything, because ink sprays, it contains a resin in it. It's not just color and water. So you have that resin in there that if you don't get in the habit of wiping it off, it could clog the inks. It doesn't mean you have to, but it's just a good habit that I get into when I'm working with it. If we want to add a little bit of pearl, I want to throw in some pearl on this too, just because we can. Throw in a little bit of that. <coughs> and we're going to go ahead and dry this. And I just want to show you that we can take something that starts out very fresh and just by mixing it with some different colors, we'll get a whole different background or effect. I'm just going to dry that with a heat tool and find my water. No, no, no. Is it already out? No, oh, no. I'll find it. Keep cooking. Keep cooking. No. Super tempted. <laughs> Don't think I wasn't tempted to be like, I'll take it. I'll just take it. Oh, here, I think. Is it? Oh, it's You are very uh -oh. resourceful. Good eyes. I just took it out of Wendy's. Good eyes. Thank you. So if I go in and just start kind of mixing this, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of water and just show you that when you start blending these colors, what I love is that they become something very different. So I'll show you kind of in the middle here. You can see where the cracked pistachio and pumice stone start to blend. You get more of like a turquoise blue hue, not so much the true green. I love that little introduction of Erlen Gold. It's really good. <coughs> Yikes. So I get kind of a blue cast with it when I combine it with pumice stone, but if I wanted to mix it with, let's say, a brown, 
and I want to take that. I'm going to take a mini ink blending tool. Let's go in, let's say gather twigs this time. So, another new thing that we have released is we have taken the popular mini distress ink pads. Now, we released the mini distress inks uh, all through last year. We did these in different sets of four. Uh, now we sell these open stock, individual. So now customers can buy whatever colors they like. If they're not interested in the kits or the color combos that I put together and they're like, you know what, I, I like to do bright palette or I want pinks or I want reds, now they can pick and choose the colors because they're sold individually now. The Distress Mini Storage Tin, also really important because it has this track system in there that if they were to buy a tin and start bu building their collection, if they didn't have all 12, you don't have to worry about your ink pads falling around because they're kind of locked in there. What I like to do, of course, is have a mini blending foam for each color that I have. Makes it really easy, really convenient. So I can go in, blend a color. If I'm going to change my color, I simply peel off the foam. It tucks into the back of the case. And then I can go in and the next color is ready to go. This way I have just a dedicated foam for each one. And I do this mostly when I'm demoing or when I'm traveling. At home when I'm working, I'm still the guy that's working with the big guys. I still want the big ink pads. I still want the large blending tool because I ink all the time. But if you're an occasional inker, this is probably a lot more convenient to just go in and, you know, seize a little bit of that. So here, let me borrow this blending <coughs> foam. I'll borrow it from one of the greens. I'll grab one out of a drawer in a minute. But here, I'm gonna go in with some brown. I'll take a little bit of that new cracked pistachio and we'll start throwing it in there and just see what new color combo we get there. What's interesting about combining it with some warmer browns, here I had a little bit of gathered twigs and some tea dye, is you can see that it takes on almost kind of a peachy property. It starts to get very coppery uh, and kind of more of that patina color when you put it in with browns, whereas when we mixed in with the grays, it took more of that cool palette. So I like a lot of these colors and the new colors are very much designed to have that crossover appeal with the existing palette. I was playing with one color and I wanted to see what it's going to look like with brown, what does it look like with other colors, and I really love the versatility of some of the new colors in Distress. I'm not gonna know what they are though. I'm not gonna crack. I'm afraid that I will. Though. You don't know what we're gonna, not do gonna to lie. you, yeah. Listen, I'm a, I've been afraid the entire time since the beginning of the show. I just think I'm gonna say it accidentally because that's all I've thought of. I'm like, don't do it, don't do it.